Come out of the world, all my people. Sing all right, everybody. So I want to talk about um, something that happened last week and something that happens all the time. You know, we were on my show talking about uh, the men dressed as women. And that was one of the topics. And it always seems to happen. So we're talking about men dressed as women. Then it, it got into the abominations that uh, just steamroll. First, it was the immodesty. Then it was the feminism. Then it was the gay marriage. And now it's transvestites or men dressing as women or whatever you want to call that. And it's only when one thing becomes accepted by society, and I say society as a whole, and most people, even the church, that we start discussing the next topic. And, you know, I, I could always bring it back to, uh, you know, the Deuteronomy 22, 5, where it says a man should not put on what pertains to a woman, a woman should not put on what pertains to a man. So this was the topic of the discussion. And then, you know, somebody tried to say, well, there's other abominations and there's other things and there's other issues as well. Why are you talking about just this? Or why are you focusing on this one? And an abomination is abomination. And you could focus on one abomination all day long. It doesn't lessen the fact because you're not talking about other ones. You know, and our creator tells us what's, what's right and wrong. And we need to call it out as believers. We're called to be watchmen. We're called to let people know. We're called to warn people. We're supposed to judge people, not to knock them down, but to lift them up. To let them know maybe they forgot. Maybe they never knew. Maybe no one ever told them. Maybe they're having some issues. But somebody has to say something. And you can't say it enough. You can't say it enough. If you offend somebody, if you upset somebody, if you bother somebody because you're calling out an abomination that's taking place, well, too bad on them. Too bad on them. That's one of the things we are to do as as, as representatives, as believers, as followers of our wonderful Messiah, to do what he did. That's what it means to follow, to do what he did. And guess what? He called out sin. He called out sin. He called out abominations. And I never heard anyone say to him, well, you're, you're focusing on that one too much. You're focusing on that sin too much. No, that's not the way it is. So, you know, you know, People want to say, well, you got to think about, you know, whatever that, all the stuff you're doing. All this, look, don't water down the message that we're supposed to get out. Don't water it down. And yes, with humility, not pride that you've overcome some challenge or you're not committing the same abominations of someone else, but with humility and with sorrow and sadness that somebody else would even think about doing something that goes against our Creator's word. Try to convey a message out of love, out of love. And I was listening to an old message today and I said it and I say it again. The, the way we live our lives is going to affect our lives because it has consequences for living in sin. If you proclaim Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, as the Messiah, the only way to salvation, you will receive salvation. However, if you are living against the guidelines and instructions of our Creator, if you're living against the guidelines and instructions of our Creator, just because you proclaimed Yeshua as the Messiah, as your Savior, does not do away with the consequences of sin. You see, the way you live your life is going to determine, not necessarily, according to Scripture, your salvation. It's going to, and, and it's going to determine your your blessings and your curses in your lives. A creator cannot bless you if you're going to continue to, to love abominations and do abominations. Now it's not for me to say who has salvation and who doesn't. And I'm not trying to do that. That's completely up to our creator, not to me. According to the word, confession in Yahshua, our wonderful Messiah, 
is what it takes. If somebody truly confesses to us that Yeshua is our Messiah, how can they continue to enjoy their abominations? Well, there's many answers to that one. You know, and the answer really isn't why are these people committing abominations? Well, the question really isn't why are these people committing abominations? The question is really, how can they stop? How can they stop? We could say many are called, but a few chosen and realize, well, it's a choice. It's a choice to partake in these things or not. And it, it, it truly is a decision and a choice. It truly is. And because of the reasons that be, some people choose to excuse abominations by themselves and by others. So the, the abomination of, of men dressing like women you know, started with a choice to live against our Creator's words of what it says in Deuteronomy 22.5. The abomination of men wanting to be with men and women wanting to be with women started with the desire, on some degree, to choose not to live according to our guidelines and instructions of our Creator. It's not about, about going, against, going according to our feelings. Because the human flesh is a lot different than, than, than the words of our Creator. The human flesh, the, the, the word says the heart of man is wicked. The heart of an unrighteous man is wicked. The human fresh, flesh and human desires have led many people into abomination. But then you look at the things that are accepted by society today. The, the, uh, the transvestites accepted by society today. The abortion accepted by society today. Homosexuality accepted by society today. Now these things, many of you watching might say, well, I don't accept those things. Well, what about yoga pants? What about walking around outside in your underwear or underclothes? What about, uh, you know, doing all these different things that are seducing each other into adultery? And what about all these different things? Well, now you say, well, that's just normal. Yes, it is normal because it's been accepted in society. It's not our Creator's way. It's not what our Creator wanted. It's not. And everyone to tell me, well, you talk about this abomination too much. Why don't you talk about another abomination? I'm going to call out sin for what it is. It's sin. And you would say, well, that's your opinion. That's your, th look, you can excuse your sin all you want. Okay, you can, well, nowhere in the Bible does it say wearing yoga pants is an abomination. Nowhere in the Bible does it say wearing yoga pants is a sin. Stop revealing your bodies to other people than your spouse. Get on board with what the scriptures say and understand what it means to live a modest life on every level. And it is a heart issue. It's not just a physical issue of unwearingness. It's a heart issue. But if you're walking outside of your house naked, or, or wearing skin tight clothes. There's some abominations you need to deal with in your life. All right, everybody. Uh, call out sin for what it is. And I, I pray for you all that, that Yah touches your heart and uh, transforms your mind and circumcise your heart. Put your comment or question below what you think. Until then, everybody, have a great day. Yah be with you and shalom, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people. Seek the truth, avoid the evil. Learn Yahweh's ways. Torah life, men, Come out of the world, 